What's up guys, Houndish here, and today it's time for a very juicy weekly reset in Destiny 2. So this is probably going to be the liveliest week outside of when Shadowkeep actually launched. We've got the new dungeon going live today, and it does come with some pretty awesome new weapons and loots. But on top of this, we have the launch of the Xenophage quest for the mysterious exotic machine gun, and so those two should keep us busy enough. However, we also have the Festival of the Lost this week, and so we're going to get us started with pretty much all of the new content inside of the video, as well as rounding up the other weekly quests, powerful drops, vendors, and all the good stuff you'd expect at reset. But first up, check out my friends at Now Drinks who make juicy, tasty drinks, which help you to focus when gaming using only natural ingredients. So they do have some pretty awesome stuff, and if that sounds good, definitely check them out, as you can save 10% in the store with the code and link below. So those details are in the description, but now let's get into reset. So initially, to get into the content right here, we'll need to visit Eris to gain access to the dungeon, and she'll give us the kind of intel or quest that we need for that. And the dungeon is something that I'll be keeping you posted on later on today, but she also has the weekly Lunar quest, so this one is for Ariana 3 if you're up to date. And then of course all of the nightmare hunts with the varying difficulties are on the director. The dungeon isn't actually visible, however, we do have the Altars of Sorrow, which is a mode that I've spoken about in a couple of videos recently, so throughout Sorrow's Harbor, the Hive perform nightmarish rituals, and, of course, uh, Eris has given us a bunch of quests and things which are probably going to get us into the dungeon, maybe Xenophage as well, because outside of what she's given us uh, in the quest tab right here, so Ariana 3, and the Deepening Wake, which uh, sends us to Sorrow's Harbor, yeah, we don't see anything specifically for Xenophage, so presumably we start here, get this done, and then, uh, yeah, we'll get into that dungeon, and hopefully Xenophage as well. But of course, I will be sure to keep you posted on all of that stuff. But seeing as we do have some new Festival of the Lost stuff, we may as well take a look at Eververse right here. So we do have some of the new festival items right here for silver, the Jacko Shell, the Tombstone Ornament, and of course we've got uh, some exotic ornaments for Xenophage right there considering it's becoming available today, so it took my preview away. But uh, this is a better specimen, so pretty cool kind of lunar themed one that we've got right there. And the Father of Islands, which is a new one for uh, Izanagi's Burden. So, if you want to collect any of those or any of the other featured silver stuff, then you can. This is the uh, Broom Sparrow. Uh, quick shout though, Bungie have said that all of the items for festival specifically, so uh, this stuff here, is going to be featured for Bright Dust in the store at some point during the event. So definitely bear that in mind before you spend silver and things like that. Uh, we've got the Gensim Relic Shell, which is a new one right there for the event. Pretty cool looking thing. And of course some other featured items for festival on the front page right here for Bright Dust some shaders and stuff like that, as well as the parting emote. But then uh, there is a festival specific page, and of course this is going to have stuff for silver, so once again bear in mind it could potentially feature for Bright Dust at some point during the event. And then for the Bright Dust page in general, we've got a few new items, so the Bone Boogie emote, which I believe was available last year, the Ocular Fortitude Shell, which uh, I think is a new one for this year's festival, maybe? Well it's kind of an updated one from a previous event, potentially. We've got the Nine Lives Shell, which of course was in the last event, Aerial Shroud, and the Winchester's Ruin, and then the Omnigal Mask, as well as Ghost Projections, Transmet Effects, Shaders, and all that good stuff. To talk about the actual Festival of the Lost content, on top of the wonderfully decorated tower right here, and the return of Eva Levante in the courtyard, we are going to be getting the Haunted Forest game mode, so this returns with a 15 minute timer to get it cleared, and initially Eva will have us unlock a mask, and remember that these come with perks for the Haunted Forest. And then in Haunted Forest and other activities during the event, we'll be able to earn candy and chocolate strange coins, which we can also get from the weekly bounties that Eva has right here. Collecting them will help us to unlock the Braytek Werewolf Auto Rifle. And the first drop for this is guaranteed at 950, so it's pretty good for leveling up if you're still doing that. But once acquired, you can get it again with random rolls, so there's a little bit of pursuit right there. And on top of this, we can also use the festival currency to purchase mask ornaments with various different characters that we can see in Eva's inventory. And so that's pretty much the bulk of what you need to know for festival and how it works, but as we discover any new stuff, I will be sure to keep you up to date here on the channel. When it comes to powerful gear, as always, we've got a bunch of that on the director, and we've got the event as well as the dungeon, the new content going off on the moon, so there are a few new drops that you can actually pick up, but otherwise we're going to be focusing on the Nightfall playlist, of course. So we do have the Nightfall ordeal right here with all the varying difficulties and powerful gear, and it says that it takes place on Mercury, so it's going to be one of the Mercury strikes right there. But then we do have the Nightfall with the inverted spire, and here you can get the Trichromatica Ghost Shell. We've also got Sabbath in Sung, and this is where you can get the Duty Bound Auto Rifle, and then Warden of Nothing, where of course you can get the Warden's Law Hand Cannon. On top of this, if you're curious about heroic modifiers for today, we do have Void Singe with Iron and then Heavyweight. 
But now for some of the legacy content, of course you can check out Menagerie, the heroic version and the reckoning modifiers if you're still running any of that stuff. But then we have the escalation protocol and the boss for this week is Damkath the Mask. And that means you have random chances to get the sniper rifle dropped whenever you take that boss down. For Dreaming City though, we are on week three of the curse. So the Ouroboria challenge is the feature descendant challenge for this week and it's accessed via the Lost Sector, a Felion's Rest that you'll find on the right side of the map. And if you're completing any of the Dreaming City or Forsaken content, then of course you can look up full guides and videos for all of the corrupted eggs, collectibles, and questing locations associated with Descendant Challenges. But otherwise, for today, that sums up the reset, so I wanted to kind of get in and talk about the main things for this week. I will be keeping you posted on dungeon-related things, the Xenophage quest, all of the new rewards, and Festival of the Lost throughout the week, so if you are new to the channel, be sure to get subscribed and I'll keep you posted on pretty much everything that you'll need to know about the game. But otherwise, thank you for tuning in. If you've enjoyed the video, a rating below very much helps me out. But for now, have fun with all of this awesome content, and I hope you guys have an awesome day.